Hey there, YouTube land, and tonight I'm here with my daughter Cass. Say hi. Hello. And uh, today we're going to be doing the 80s dec horror decade challenge, my complete age collection. And full disclosure, uh, like always, this is going to be stuff that I've missed out because I have a lot of movies. Uh, so, <laughs> so there will be things that I missed out, but there's this will give me a good depth of looking to my 80s collection of many of the 80s films I got. There's five piles of varying sizes here. Varying sizes. And we still don't know all of producer. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Well, let's start with uh, whatever, with number one. Let's go one by one. Okay, so let's go with uh, the first one. We talked about this one, the uh, sequel in the uh, in the nineties one, and this is the late eighties. Pumpkinhead came out, and this was like an amazing film. Uh, I gotta say, I did did love this movie. This came out in eighty eight, and uh, great monster movie. Uh, Matthew hasn't seen this yet. He's actually thinking of buying this one in the uh, Screen Factory sale. So hopefully he did pick it up. So Tomkin out. And that's the movie. Prince of Darkness is one I saw with my dad in the theater. Uh, really cool film. John Carpenter. I always love John Carpenter stuff. This has a great ending. Uh, Donald Pleasant, who Carpenter used in a lot of his films. We've got uh, the guy from Simon vs. Simon. It's a, it's a very cool film. I actually really do like that one. Great 80s film. <clears throat> Talks about the, what evil like, on a different level. A Night of the Demons is a cult classic. It's very cheesy, very fun. It's uh, what a lot of people think the 80s is. It's very flashy and cool and special effects. Uh, Screaming Mad George, I think, was the guy that did it. Was it Screaming Mad George or Steve Johnson? Steve Johnson did the effects on this. <coughs> but it just did some amazing stuff. There were some great effects on this one here. Lipstick sequence. Motel Hell was kind of like a horror comedy. It uh, managed to utilize some uh, different actors. Roy Calhoun was a Western actor who was in this one here. Uh, Wolfman Jack was a famous radio DJ, was in this film as well. We had uh, the guy that played Norm from Cheers. A lot of people don't consider this one horror, but I do consider this one horror, and it's revenge horror. Revenge thrillers are that type. And Mad Max. Uh, something really horrific happens, and he goes insane and gets revenge. Next up is what I think is the hands down greatest of all the dead films that were ever made uh, Day of the Dead. Just an incredible film. Uh, it takes it uh, farther, it gets bleaker, it gets kind of cooler, uh, it gets more personal. The story gets even tighter than it was in, the, in uh, Don and a Night. It just works for me on every level. Next up is this is one that Cass knows well. Uh, it's like I consider it like my favorite movie. It's her favorite movie. Not oh. just her favorite horror movie, but her favorite movie. Oh, okay. Yeah, Dolls is a fantastic film. It's like a, it's almost like a fairy tale. In a way. Every time. Me and Matthew would be home alone. He'd be like, what do you want to do? And I'd be like, let's watch Dolls! <laughs> and now you have the Blu-ray, too. So, yeah. Have you watched the Blu-ray yet? No. Gotta watch that. I've watched the movie, though, a million times. <laughs> <laughs> There's a great feature in how they made the main movie and stuff, too. Oh, cool. So, definitely a great movie. If you don't have any Screen Factory collection, please get it. It's a really good movie. Next up is They Live, and uh, rest in peace Roddy Piper, who starred in this film, actually, he passed away today. Uh, we'll do a, uh, do a video on that later, I know I think Cuthbert already are, are, are going to be doing a, a whole program of that. So uh, Roddy Piper, Alien Invasion, one of the most kick-ass movies. Uh, he came there to kick ass and chew bubblegum, and he's all out of bubblegum. The Fog was the follow-up to um, Halloween, a fantastic film, by the way. Uh, it's way, way underrated. It's got a great cast. We got Adrian Barbeau in this one. We got Jamie Curtis. We got Janet, Janet Lee. We got Tom Atkins, Sans the Stash, but uh, still Tom Atkins on the list. How whole, but just an amazing ghost story. Love this movie. Dan Houseman narrates it. Next up is The Burning. Again, a fantastic little film. Uh, one of the greatest slashers. One of the '82 collection. '82 was one of the greatest years in horror cinema. Uh, just amazing slasher stuff that was done. This is an incredible film. Just the effects on this one. Tom Spadey's work as Cropsey with Cropsey is incredible. Terror Train is one that scared me the most. This is a movie that scared me. Why? Because my mom and my stepdad at the time decided they were going to put this movie on blast while I was in the bedroom next to it, and I hear all this screaming and yeah, and like all these horrible murder sequences and not see anything. That so that's so funny. Yeah, that is so horrible to do to a kid. Uh, <laughs> Says you. <laughs> He, like, I, I will forever be scarred by this. He played Child's Play when I was, like, really little. I hear Matthew, like, yeah, this is awesome. I was in the corner, like, crying myself <laughs> I think that's, asleep. You're like, <laughs> On 
the inside I was. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it's Chucky is like a doll, so it's like for kids. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sleepaway Camp 3, a really cool one. This is a really great dish. It's got the work print on here, so this is a definite pickup. This is a buy for sure. Uh, I love the uh, Angela Baker films here. It's just incredible stuff. Uh, Sleepaway Camp 2 is my favorite in the series. I'm a happy camper. I love the song. I love this film. I just love this one all around. I was so happy when it came out. And my cat, cat is. Box. My oh, cat got puked. We have to get it on the couch. Did she get it on the couch? Yeah. <sighs> Cats. Okay, I'm asleep over there. Actually, here. <laughs> yeah, because I got it cleaned up. And of course, the original Sleepaway Camp came out in 1983. And, uh. You know, that totally distracted me. I'm not going to start my video over, but that did distract me. Cat hair about shit, really? No, no, let's go on with it. We will go on. We will try John. Get away from my movies, Kyle. cat. I am not going to pile <laughs> these movies up again. Seaboy Camp, great film. Uh, it's a great tr classic trilogy. You can get all three of them now on Screen Factory. Make sure you do so. <laughs> Dark Man, great film. It's kind of like a horror action, you know, kind of sci fi, kind of fancy ish. Uh, Sam Raimi did this one, and this was pretty much it. How you got Spider Man, just great visuals in this film. Halloween 3, you know, there's eight more days to Halloween. Lucky Shamrock. I love this movie. It's very much not the Halloween in the way it's sent. Yep. Remember that? Uh, it's got the, uh, pretty much the guy that wants to destroy the world for using kids. Halloween 2 is a sequel to the classic Halloween film. Uh, it was one of the original. Uh, kind of hospital horror films. Love this. Great movie. Uh, it's was, it was kind of comical. My uh, stepmom, actually, she didn't like it when it came out. She was watching it and she said, I don't like this. is not Halloween. I don't like this at all. So she pretended to be sick so she could get her money back and go home. Uh, but uh, I do love this movie right here. You know. Uh, Cat People, fantastic film. Great visuals. Uh, Natasha Kinski is one of the most beautiful women in the world. At that, and that time, at that time, and she was just amazing. When you think of like the way Angelina Jolie shot start up today, Natasha Kinski was was she was that girl back then. Malcolm McDowell, just an amazing actor. I got to meet him. From Beyond, an incredible movie. Love this one. Uh, again, this is a fantastic film. Barbara Crampton, Ken Foray, we got uh, Jeffrey Coombs. What else can you say? And it's H.P. Lovecraft, man. Yeah? Uh, pure '80s uh, horror film, and that is Nudge the Comet. Love it, love it, love it. Angel 3D, not a great film, but it was one of the uh, 3D collection. Actually, it's a pretty decent 3D in this one here as well. Uh, it's just a very 80s film, very kind of cheesy. Stuff, I love it. Uh, Amityville 2, The Possession, the best of all the Amityville films. This one was made uh, by an uh, Italian director, actually, and it really shows. It kind of has more of an Italian -like type of feel to it, and that's what makes it so good. Next up is Q, The Winged Serpent. I love this movie. Just a fantastic film. And uh, Larry Cohen did a great job with that one. Uh, Prison, uh, made by Rennie, Rennie Harlan. Just another one's just. When was this one? '88. Yeah, I, I love this movie. It's kind of like a haunted prison. Vigo Mortensen's in that one. Where we come from? Uh, Death Valley. Uh, a cool little thriller. It's got Steve Bacchetti in this one. I've got Peter Billingsley, who of course was in the uh, the movie Christmas Story with Bob Clark. Deadly Eyes. Giant rats are eating people in Toronto. I kid you not. That's what this movie's about. Eat kids and everything. Elite everything. Uh, Crawl Space. I talked about this one out, but I love Crawl Space. Please kill Mr. Kinski. Great film. Uh, Kinski plays a guy that was like the, uh, I think the son of a Nazi or, or was a Nazi. Uh, it's, it's been a while since I watched it, but I do like it. Tell you about it. Boston does a great job too. This is Philip Moore's best film. Uh, Philip Moore directed Howl Howling 2 and Howling 3. I do, I do enjoy Howling 2 for the camp factor. Uh, howling, uh, this one here, The Beast Within, is my favorite. From Whisper to a Scream, an early film by Jeff Burr. I think this may have been Jeff Burr's first film. It's an anthology film. Uh, there's a documentary on this that are, that is even better than the films. It's really, this documentary is so well done on this one here. I actually re reviewed the documentary on its own, and the people that made it, I made a comment on that, and I really did appreciate that. It was really nice to hear, actually, when somebody that I actually worked on this stuff actually comments. From Whisper to a Scream, it's one you should have. Final Terror. This movie was uh, was made earlier, basic in, in the 80s, but uh, around the time like slasher movies became really big, 
and there's body and they became, basically became body count films. So uh, they had to go back and film another scene where two more people died because it wasn't a big enough death count. Now this movie has a high cast. We've got Adrian Zemed, we got Daryl Hannah, we have uh, Joe Pantaleone in there, and I think it's uh, Rachel. What's her name again? Is she in this one? Rachel Ward. Yeah, she is in this one. Final exam, way better than I remembered, actually. I thought this was going to be like a really bad one. I was going to pick it up just for bad cheese in the film, but I actually really enjoyed this film. I'm watching again. Great slasher one. You will speak the most hated kid in the world. Have you watched this one? No. You still have to watch this one. This is a kid. Nobody likes him. I mean, his name is Stanley Cooper Smith. Uh, everybody hates him. The teachers hate him. The students hate him. He's an, he's an awkward-looking dude. Um, and he just, nobody just, I mean, like, poor kid. Like that. Really? That's, uh, it's her fault. That, was, that's, that is sad. Without warning, a uh, great little film there. Uh, recently, the Code Ray guys did the commentary on this one. I didn't get onto that one. I really wish I did. Uh, hopefully, it'll be on for the next commentary. Long, it's a good movie. Um, Without warning, is like a fantastic little film. It's got a what a cast, man. Uh, we got a uh, Christopher Nelson, Cameron Mitchell, uh, Jack Palance, Martin Landau. We got a uh, Neville Brand in this one here. Uh, Ralph Meeker's in this. Ralph Meeker, of course, is in one of my favorite movies of all time. It's a Criterion one. Which board? Love this movie. Uh, this is for me. This is better actually than Night of the Demons. It's a definitely more personal story. Uh, Tony Katane is in this one. She does a fantastic job. Oh, we have uh, Todd Allen, uh, and of course, uh, man, my favorite, Steve Nichols from uh, Days for Life. It's actually from my comic now. Uh, Swamp Thing was like kind of like a horror comic book that was done by Lynn Wynn. Uh, so this is kind of like uh, talking about the early Swamp Thing stuff. Uh, Adrian Barbeau's in this one. Uh, just a great film. Ray Wise in this one as well. Horror Show. Uh, there's another one coming out called Shocker right now, which you guys should be pre-ordering. It's pretty awesome. Horror Show is really great one. And the really cool thing about it is that uh, this is done by Sean, Sean Cunningham. He produced it. Uh, John, James Isaac actually directed this one here. And But Brian James is a uh, pass on now. He uh, really committed to the role of the character. He really did a great job, too. Next up is the uh, Family Opera. I reviewed this one here with a friend of mine. Uh, great little film. I love this one here. And uh, so it's a classic. So this one is 80s, right? Yeah, 89. Just made it. Uh, New Year's Evo, uh, a review this with my son, great one. I Again, have it. If you don't have it, put this one in your screen collection. One of the best slashers out there. It's just amazing. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Monkey Shines, that's a fun film. Uh, done by George Romero back in the time makes, where when he wasn't doing zombie films. So he made a couple movies. He made The Dark Half in the, in the 90s. He made Monkey Shines in the late 80s. And it was a, I really do enjoy this film. Leviathan is kind of a sci-fi a horror film, uh, it's pretty good, got a great cast. Much better uh, sci science fiction, horror, fantasy, comedy, Invaders from Mars. This is one that was just kind of uh, tonally, it went, uh, went all over, but I think it, it did really well. A lot of people didn't catch on this one at the time. It was Toe Hooper, it's a Toe Hooper classic, and uh, really should be getting way more credit than it does. Terrorvision and the Video Dead are two uh, fantastic ones, especially Terrorvision. Terrorvision is one that should be in everybody's collection. This is Hands down, the best Screen Factory double feature that's out there. Oh, they are really good, actually. Uh, Bad Dreams Visiting Hours are two fantastic little films. Bad Dreams is about a girl that was in, involved in a cult, and uh, basically the whole cult get, kills themselves, and, except for her. She escapes, but, and all of a sudden she starts seeing the cult leader who died in the fire, uh, his burnt body kind of showing up all over the place, and people start to die. Is he come back, or is there another explanation for it? Visiting hours, a uh, kind of misogynistic killer. Here's this uh, this girl on the on TV, like kind of basically talking about him. He attacks her, uh, not good enough. She goes to the hospital. He decides he's going to follow her, and he's going to finish it finish it off. And who is in visiting hours? Well, William Shatner's in visiting hours. Yeah, Captain Kirk himself. Yeah, what's funny about this one? I did not. I could not. <laughs> Cannot what? Watch them? I, mm, <laughs> Ghoul no. Ghoulies and Ghoulies 2. Did you watch Ghoulies? Yes. Yes, you did. I knew you, you did. You made me watch it. it was, this wasn't quite the experience. It was a film. The Ghoulies was fun. It was fun. It was weird. Uh, Ghoulies 2 we haven't watched yet. We got to yet watch Ghoulies. Yeah, it did have a girl from Law and Order. She was yeah, smoking she was hot. Pretty, yeah, she was pretty good back then. Uh, Ghoulies 2. We still got to watch that one. My other favorite uh, 
Blu-ray double feature that they put out was X-Ray and Skid Side. These are two fantastic 80s films, great slash films. Barbie Benton is gorgeous, so, you know, there's an awkward nude scene that uh, you want to see just because Barbie Benton's... Well, yeah, and uh, Skid Side, which is also a fantastic film with a great cast, classic Well, these are going to come back over after the interview. Phenomena, fantastic little ladies film done by Dario Gento, stars Jennifer Connelly, uh, really underrated. Pedicide Cemetery, Lucio Fulci, one of his best. I like Freudenstein, I love this, the characters. The kid in this is hateful and lying and boring. And I hate him. I'll, and I'll keep wanting to see him die, but that's why they got to leave him for last, right? Um, the Beyond, it's a classic. If you don't have it, you really should own it. If you don't have this one, get, go grab the uh, Grindhouse releasing one. But this is probably one of the most beautiful. Uh, Steelbooks I have ever seen in my entire life. This is gorgeous. Demons, uh, the classic uh, film, and Demons 2. Uh, great soundtracks, great films. One set in the theater, one set at a birthday party, one with, has the demons coming out of like a theater screen, basically. Well, not really coming out of a theater screen, but being like being made from that. And the other one being made from a VHS tape, so different eras. Uh, next up is Life Force, and again, Toe Pooper, classic. Uh, Mathilda May, she's naked almost through the entire film. We have, of course, uh, Captain McCart in here as well. Just a really cool film. I like this one a lot. Steve Rails back. Oh, Boy to the Eye was uh, just... I love this movie. I really do. Donald Campbell did this one. Uh, just a beautiful film. Uh, could have been an average slasher film. It made so, so much more. Okay, guys, for the guys worried about the uh, Dress to Kill, the Criterion Edition that's out and it doesn't look like the quality is that good, Arrow put, Video put out this version here, Dress to Kill. It is amazing. Uh, features are incredible. The transfer is awesome, and you, this is the Dress to Kill that you need to have in your collection. Just incredible stuff. And take this from a guy who's the biggest Apama fan ever. I love this movie. Uh, I love this movie, too. Killer Times from Outer Space. Uh, this is an awesome film. I love it. <laughs> There's just so much great coolness about this film here. Uh, John Vernon's in this film, John Nelson's in this film, Aurel Daniel's in this film. It, it is so cool. It is so fun. And uh, But I think I like John Vernon's like angry cop the most in this one. First time I ever saw clowns in like a scary fashion. Really? Yeah. You gotta see it. Pieces. Love this movie. I really do. This is, this is 80s, right? I think this is 80s. This might be 70s, actually. This is questionable. I do not remember. Bonus TV! <laughs> uh... Christmas Evil, I think it was done in 1980, actually. Uh, and uh, just a fun little film. I do enjoy this one. This is like the best Christmas story done. You know, Black Christmas is the best like Christmas horror movie. But this is like, literally, really is a Christmas like, miracle type of thing. So we... <laughs> fun <laughs> Okay, give me another one. <clears throat> Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, the Arrow edition, is the only edition you should have of this movie. Uh, just a great, great addition. Great film. I love this movie. Now, Texas Chainsaw Massacre was so kind of like dark and deep that uh, they had to go in a much different way. And how did they go? They went with like comedy. And it works. It really works. Uh, Dennis Hopper's in this one. Bill Mosley steals the show. It was Chuck. My favorite era release, uh, aside from the Vincent Price one, is this one right here. And this is an amazing one. It is Society. If you haven't got this one. Oh, it doesn't look. That's from the shunting. It's pretty pretty. It's it's funny. It's satirical. Uh, people a lot of people just see the grossness and don't get the humor. But there's a lot of really good humor in that. And Billy Warlock, some people for some reason don't like as the lead. I think was perfect in the lead role. And uh, even famous for uh, for Days of Life. Uh, Fright Night is my favorite vampire movie of all time. It really is. Uh, it's got Jerry Dandridge. We've got uh, Roddy McDowell in this one here. It is such a great film. Chris Sarandon as Jerry Dandridge is just amazing as a vampire. He's an out bleeding vampire. And uh, it was something that uh, Chris Sarandon put in, put in there himself. And uh, i got to say, I'm not usually, I don't usually extol the Twilight Time, but they did an amazing job in this one here. It's a fantastic film. Oh, these are cool looking too. The Boogeyman is not a good movie. I just like it. It's really bad. Uh, it's by Uli Lama. It's, uh, it's really bad, but you have to watch it. You just do. It's just one of those that you're like, somebody made this movie? Somebody literally made this movie. Because this movie has so much promise. So much promise. It does. Oh, I just realized I had another silly question. <laughs> okay. Uh, Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers. Uh, 
just a fun little film. Uh, that was silly. It is very silly. We got Lenny Quigley doing the chainsaw hooker dance in here. Uh, yeah, it's a great cast. I mean, we got like Gunnar Hansen from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Lenny Quigley, Michelle Bauer is in this one as well. Uh, just a whole bunch of fun. And this one here as the uh, the bonus of having a like a bunch of features that are really good, and it includes Lenny Quigley's '80s horror workout video. It starts out with her in the shower for like five minutes, soaping. Uh, yeah. I guess she had to get clean before her. Yeah. Slaughterhouse. Uh, Bubba has an axe to grind. A big axe. Slaughterhouse was one that hadn't been on, uh, I don't think it was on Blu-ray, or I'm not even sure if it was on DVD, but this was, except for like a, kind of like one of those, uh, what do you call them? Illegal bootleg DVD things. But uh, Slaughterhouse, great little film. Uh, gotta rewatch that again, actually. Huh. One of my favorite hor bad horror movies of all time is Don't Go in the Woods. Or Don't Go in the Woods Alone, as some people call it. This is so bad. Have you seen this one, Cass? No. You so gotta see this one. It's about a, a guy in the woods killing people and dude like whose accent. Movie. No, no, it's a guy <laughs> whose, whose accent keeps changing and you find out that Plenty Sticks saw all. Oh, okay. Uh, this is one I don't think I ever see. It's, it's a pretty brutal. Brut it's Mother's Day by a lot of captains, actually, brother. It's actually a really good film. Uh, it is kind of dark. There's like some very rapey scenes, so uh, watch out for that, no, not for the younger viewers. And uh, But it has a really great twist ending on there that I really did enjoy. I saw this one. Yeah, it's a good one. Uh, graduation Day. It's one that when I originally saw it, I wasn't a big fan of it, but I, the more I watched it, the more I actually liked this film. Here. A great film. It actually has a, a Vanna White and Linda Quigley in this movie. And uh, just uh, some cool stuff. This actually is a, if you get this edition, you get Scream Queens Horror Hero, Hero, well, Horror Heroines Exposed. It's a really great documentary on Scream Queens. Next up is another of my favorite bad movies, Night Train to Terror. Just such a fun anthology film. Uh, once you hear the song, uh, you're not gonna get it every half day. You really won't. And this is so bad and so incomprehensible. It was three films that were just put together at the next. I don't know what was that. Snap. Taste for it. Uh, Deadly Blessing. I love this movie. I think it's a highly underrated Wes Craven film. Iris Porgnine's in this one here. Uh, just, we have some great. This is early uh, Sharon Stone. Uh, just a beautiful cast. And a great kind of like a supernatural, plus there's a murder mystery. It's a whole like kind of cool aspect of that. Fun House. Well, Toby Hooper's kind of a slasher film, you know, because I don't consider Texas Chainsaw Massacre a slasher film. I really don't. Uh, but I did really enjoy this one, The Fun House, and the great references to uh, Frankenstein films. The Howling, one of the greatest, uh, you know, werewolf movies ever made. Just great, great effects. A great cast. Uh, the girl that played the uh, the lead, I think, her, uh, I think, was it Belaski? The, she passed on way too soon. She was from the vampire. The lead vampire in it was like a uh, lead vampire, lead werewolf in that one. Was played by the same guy that played the uh, Doctor on uh, Star Trek Voyager. Uh, Phantasm 2. I love the Phantasm films. This is just a, such a fantastic little film. Such a joy to watch. And uh, Psycho uh, 2, uh, a movie that Psycho didn't, that nobody ever thought they'd make a sequel of, and where people were kind of shocked when they did. And they got Richard Franklin, who actually was a really great choice because he had done a lot of suspense movies back in the day. So Psycho 2, great film, great commentary on this one here. If you haven't checked it out, definitely deserves a watch. A Meg Tilly, Jennifer Tilly's sister is a great job on this one here. A Psycho 3 was directed by Anthony Perkin, Perkins, and I really love this. It's sleazier than the rest of them, uh, but it's uh, it's cool, it's unique, it's kind of different, it's weird, and I, uh, I do love it. I love the over-the-top uh, performance that Perkins gives. You can see he was having a good time. This one is... This for sure... Yeah. Okay, this is not in the 80s, I think. This, there's a Phantasm movie over there. <laughs> See what we got. Is this from the 80s? <laughs> I was doing this here really fast. No. <laughs> those, those belonged in the 90s video that I already did. Uh, House, a uh, wonderful film by Sean Cunningham. Uh, I love this movie, William Cat from Grace American Heroes in it. Just uh, a fun, fun film. Uh, great special effects. Richard Mall does a great role in this one. Hellbound, Harry's with you. I'm waiting for the data special Blu-ray set coming for uh, Arrow Video. I got a pre order that one, actually. Uh, really great stuff. I love this movie. It really is on par with the first one. 
and uh, somebody Tony Randall does a great job directing it. And uh, uh, another Fulci film, City of the Living Dead. Very cool stuff, very awesome stuff. Loving it. The Prowler is one of my favorite like slasher films of all time. The effects on this are great. Tom Savini again doing great realistic special effects. The ending is incredible for this one here. The scene, you know what it is. Awesome. Mm, sure, that's a good one. Uh, House on Story to Roll uh, was one of my favorites of uh, of all time. Probably one of my all time favorite slashers. It's up there in the top five slasher movies of all time for me. It just has some great stuff. Has a great cast. Has a very dark ending, uh, and uh, it's very much in like Black Christmas and so the ending it has. Uh, it's one where, yeah, basically he's like a, they're there. They accidentally killed the den mother, the house mother. And they like drop her into the water, and they think that she's you know, she's not really dead. She come back and kill them, but actually it's someone else in the house. Oh. Uh, Return to Horror High, a classic one, uh, kind of kind of horror comedy, uh, very satirical. We got George Clooney as, as a small role in this one here. But actually, a cool role. It's uh, Alex Rocco's in this. I uh, really have fun with this movie. I really did. I got to rewatch this one. You got to watch this one sometime. Anyway. <laughs> Waxworks 1 and 2. I just reviewed these recently, so I'm not going to be talking about this much right now. But these Waxworks films are amazing. Uh, both of them are incredible films. <laughs> Scanners, this is an amazing movie. I just love it. Uh, it's, it had two sequels done in the 90s. Uh, those like some incredible stuff. Uh, Howling 3. It's not a good movie, not good at all, but I just had fun with it. Howling uh, 5, which, uh, Howling 6 it wasn't done, so we're going to hide that one there. Oh, uh, Howling 5, I did have fun with it. Actually, Rebirth, there was, they had lost the uh, wear of suit when they were making this movie. So there's only, the only thing they had a hand, a wear of hand. <laughs> no, no. So it was very cool. The picture almost makes it look like a, like a comedy. Sorry, it wasn't. The f one of the first kids' Christmas horror movies, actually. Gremlins. You got the old PG-30 rating. It's really cool. We got Gremlins and Mugway. You, you remember, you don't get water on them. And whatever you do, don't feed them after midnight. I have a squeaky toy. Like, 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 a gizmo? Yeah. Remember you make that? That's cool. Friday the 13th, Friday the 13th, Part 2. Amazing films. Great slasher series. The first five were done in the, were done in the 80s. And at least the first six were done in the 80s. Uh, can you give me another thing for that? So these are the first four. I don't have the double feature of uh, on Blu-ray part five and six, but I do have them. Uh, we're all done in the '80s. They're all great films, amazing films. I love them all. But I love part five. People give a lot of a lot of crap to it. Part four is uh, universally known as probably the best. Part three is the most likable cast. Here's the one that scared my daughter. Yes. You, know, you did all like that. It doesn't scare me anymore, <laughs> but it did really good. Child's play. Uh, a classic film, uh, Tom Holland. I just listened to a podcast last night with uh, Tom Holland. Uh, Axiom. He did a great job as, uh, being interviewed. And uh, Tom Holland likes Tom Holland, but I actually can serve. And uh, that's okay. Uh, Return of the Living Dead, a fun film, a great uh, soundtrack. And I know that uh, Scream Factory is playing it. This is the uh, second side edition right here. It's a uh, steelbook. It includes. This is what uh, Scream Factory has to do to make this movie. Uh, watchable for their special edition. It includes the whole More Brains, Trend Living Dead, doc, two over two hour long documentary, all the over two hours of features that More Brains had, talking about uh, the uh, part two, two and three. Uh, it's got an, like uh, origins of Return of Living Dead, the FX of it, party time. It's got like an hour long thing talking about the music of Living Dead, and uh, a bunch of other stuff. It's just amazing. Uh, Basket Case. Uh, I know the original was done in the 80s. I'm uh, not sure when the other ones were done. I think at least two, the first two I think were done in the 80s. No, no, the second one, second, third one done in the 90s, but the first one, first best case film was in the 80s. Great little film. I love this movie. Body Double got to me by my uh, good friend, Preston Berger. Uh, and by the way, uh, I showed House by the Cemetery. My good friend Sammy, Father Girl 5 and 7, actually gave me that one. It's one of my favorites. <clears throat> Body Double, again, and another favorite film of mine. It's got Craig Wass and Greg Henry and Mary Griffith. And the beautiful, 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 beautiful Deborah Sheldon. That she is extremely beautiful. This is a great movie. Brian De Palma. If you're a Brian De Palma fan, you have to have that movie. A New York Ripper, a Fulci film where the killer talks like Donald Duck. 
Uh, no, I'm I'm not making that up. That's that's really a part of the film. Well, she like Donald Duck. Twelve Good Night, uh, directed by David Hess, of course, who starred in like movies like Last House on the Left and House at the Edge of the Park. Uh, I did enjoy this film. It's uh, very cool, very well done. It starred Jennifer Runyon, one of those '80s uh, whore, kind of like a, she was an '80s like goddess. Uh, the Dorm That Drip Blood, my actually Blu-ray one of this didn't work, only the DVD copy worked of it. <clears throat> so uh, I have a DVD copy, but not a Blu-ray copy of this. <clears throat> um, which kind of sucked, but uh, it, was, it was pretty cool. I love this movie, actually. It's really fun, uh, really dark. Curtains is one of my favorite, favorite 80s horror. i got so many favorite 80s horror movies. Uh, this is a blending of slash. One guy wanted to make a slasher movie. One guy wanted to make kind of more of a giallo type movie. Both of them argued. Neither one of them got exactly what they wanted. They got a, like a mix of both of them, and, it, and the mix is incredible. It's like chocolate and peanut butter all over again. Such a great film. I like that. You know, that's a good analogy, you know? <clears throat> Patting myself in the back here, guys. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, Prom Night. Uh, this is an amazing transfer. If you're going to get Prom Night at all, please get the Synapse version. It is amazing. It really is. Uh, Prom Night 2 also came out in the 80s. It was called Prom Night 2, uh, Hello, Mary Lou, and it was a very much a kind of a very different film. This is a great little slash film. Really fun. Maniac Cop. All such a great series of films. I love the original. we got Bruce Campbell, Tom Atkins. Uh, we got Robert Zadar in this. Uh, Richard Roundtree. Uh, Lauren Landon's in it. William Smith is in this. Holy crap. There's so much testosterone in this film. What a great little film. Atkins and the stash. You know? And the stash. Reanimator. Just one of the greatest horror movies made. It's just so, it's funny. Uh, you know, oops, uh, sorry, your cat died. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> yeah, he kind of kills the cat. Just a really great little film. There's some more coming up. Thank God I got her. I would not be able to get this one. You're awesome, my friend. <clears throat> Evil Dead 2. Uh, this here is the uh, special uh, horror legacy, like a slipcase edition that did here in, in the Canada. I have this on Blu-ray as well. I love this movie. It's uh, When I first saw it, though, I didn't love it because I saw the original um, Evil Dead and I thought it was amazing. No. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Uh, just an incredible little film. And uh, Evil Dead is just a classic. Everybody has own Evil Dead, too. Uh, <laughs> uh, Predator, uh, you know, Schwarzenegger, fantastic little film. And, yeah. and I, uh, I got a lot. It's a, kind of, it's a sci fi horror action film. You gotta love it. Uh, Death Trap. It's just more of a, uh, a thriller, kind of like comedy thing. It's based on the uh, stage play. Uh, Michael Caine and Chris Reeves, Dan Can do great jobs being the uh, three actors in this film here. It's just incredible. One of the classics of the 80s is the Nightmare on Elm Street ones. And so the uh, parts one, two, three uh, were all done. I'm not sure about part four. Let's, let's just check here. Part one, two, three, four, and five were all done in the uh, in the 80s. And those are really the good parts. When it gets to part six, it's really, really bad. But I do like the original five. Part three being my uh, favorite. I think it was uh, Bailey Walsh that mentioned on one of my videos recently that she uh, was a really big fan of Joey who was in part three. She had a kind of a crush on him. And well I had a crush on uh, like well uh Patricia Arquette and I uh, and of course Nancy Heather Lang Kemper herself. And Jennifer Rubin too. Um my better half's favorite like uh one of her favorite horror movies and she likes it better than the original. Prana to the spawning. She's always had like an affinity for this film. This is one of the first movies she went out and she would got squealed with joy when she found this film. She just thinks it needs a special edition. So Screen Factory, this thing here needs a special edition. Piranhas that fly, guys. I don't know if this one's in the 80s. I think this was the 1990s. In case I missed this one in the, in the early 90s, uh, it's either done in 89 or 90. I'm pretty sure it was 90. Return to Living, Ned Living Dead remake. But anyway. Uh, this one is done in the 80s. Wow, yeah, here's one that's actually done... 1982, Midnight. Love this movie here. Uh, is it a good movie? No. Is it a, is it kind of is it a fun movie to watch? Yeah. Uh, the acting is not very good. The uh, storylines, man. But I didn't I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> what a great storylines, man. The acting's man, but I didn't enjoy it. Eyes of a Stranger is actually a, a very cool film. I did dig this one here. Uh, if you haven't seen it, it's part of the uh, Twisted Terror collection set. I uh, do love this one. Put this one over in the box set with Twisted Terror. Uh, Deadly Friend, this is the uh, unrated edition. I love this movie. Wes Craven. It's it's very cheesy, very bad. No, I'll get into this. Yeah, 
Oh, this one's yeah. supposed to be there, too. Okay, one more twist is there coming up. This one's supposed to be there. Oliver Stone's The Hand. Uh, Michael Caine. Uh, you either love this movie or you hate it. I'm on, I'm on the side of uh, loving it. I think it's a great little film. I've never listened to the commentary on it, which I really do have to do. I, think, I thought Caine did a great job. And uh, just uh, an amazing film. Dark Knight Scarecrow was a TV horror film. Like I said, TV horror films, like well, especially in the 70s and 80s, were like a big thing. And they were actually really, really good. Uh, this one here is uh, Dark Knight Scarecrow, just a great film. Uh, I think it was Panama's CBS. Yeah, CBS did this one here. Uh, Charles Durnings and Larry Drake, just this amazing role of a guy that uh, he's like uh, mentally, uh, has mentally, ch he's mentally challenged. And he uh, gets accused of something he didn't do. And it's uh, heartbreaking what happens to him. In the 80s? Yeah, 80s, actually. So, yep. Yeah. And before, The Evil Escapes, uh, when they're doing the uh, TV Amityville films, they're going to do like a series of them. Uh, Patty Duke, Jane Wyatt, Norman Light. I really don't remember a lot about this one here. I just uh, thought it was a fun one. Uh, this is one of my favorite ghost stories of all time, The Changeling. It just really is an amazing ghost story. And it takes and it does a lot with a very little. You, all you need is uh, George C. Scott to be scary, actually. He's a scary dude. But no, uh, basically, a ball coming down the stairs. Uh, shadows, the sound of a dripping faucet, a, um, a, 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 wheel, a wheelchair, just, it's, it's just so easy and just so well done. Not so easy, but so effortlessly done. Yes, it's easy. Thanks. <laughs> Galaxy of Terror is a great, uh, one of the great Corman films. It really is one of the great Corman films. A classic. I love it. And a uh, wonderful film. If you don't have it, you really should get it. It's a Roger Corman cult classic one, and uh, I do really, really recommend it. Another 80s one, Humanized from the Deep, another one that I loved a lot. Basically, a bunch of humanized creatures from the ocean come to uh, to rape the women of the town. And what's really cool is what they do is they kill the dogs the day before they come to do their attack. It's just really well done, really well thought out. All, first, all, all three of them or the first two? Uh, first two, right? Yeah. Yeah, the first two, the, the good ones <laughs> from the 80s. Some Pride of Massacre, some Pride of Massacre 2. Uh, some fantastic little slash films, uh, written and directed by uh, by females, and just some great stuff. Both these are great. Curse and the Curse Two, uh, two kind of horror classics. The Curse is kind of like an uh, like a Lovecraftian type of film. Curse Two is a mess, but it's a fun mess. The guy's hand turns to a snake. Really. Uh, Edge of Sanity, a, a great little turn on the uh, Jekyll and Hyde story with some cocaine added in there. Uh, Anthony Perkins plays uh, the Doctor Jekyll role. I'm not sure he's called Dr. Jekyll. It's called, it might be called something else. Is he called, yeah, he's actually called Dr. Henry Jekyll. Uh, yeah, great film. I really liked uh, Perkins' portrayal in this one here. Howling 2, Philip Mora. Again, a fantastic little film. I'd really need to get the uh, Screen Factory Blu-ray. Unfortunately, I couldn't afford it. So hopefully I'll get it down the road. But I really did. A great friend of mine actually gave me this one here. And uh, I was really, really grateful for it. Another screen one I need upgrades to Screen Factory because I really want it. Is a scarecrow one. I just really dug this film. It was very cool, highly underrated. Love this movie. I would say. Uh, so Jeff Lieberman's movie Squirm. Love this one here. It's a funny film. Uh, the movie Slither would pay homage to this one a lot, and I, I did. I really did enjoy this one. You know those? They're so cool. I think they're both 80s, aren't they? 84 and 88, right? 87. Right? Uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night, and Silent Night, Deadly Night Two. You have to see them. Uh, Sun and Dead Night is actually a solid, pretty solid horror film for what it is. Sun and Dead Night 2 is a pretty solid, bad horror film. And you can actually watch the second one and actually see most of the good parts of the first one. Oh, perfect. Howling, howling, Halloween 4 and 5. They brought back Michael Mars after the uh, part 3 didn't work out with the audience. They brought Michael back in part 4. And uh, part 4 is an incredible, amazing film uh, directed by Dwight. The way Little just did a great job. Part five was a rushed mess, but I do still enjoy it. Yeah, I, the Shining, uh, with of course Kubrick's uh, ver version of the uh, of the story. This one was given me by uh, my good friend uh, Sammy X. Pelagar. He watched some of Sammy's videos. Yep. So uh, Shining is a, it's, it's a great film. It's a, it's not the, it's not a good Stephen King adaptation, but it's a great movie. Uh, American Werewolf London, again, wrapped with Howling, just some, two of my favorite werewolf movies of all time. You know, Howling, uh, American Werewolf London, and Ginger Snaps, just three great, great, uh, like, uh, werewolf films. Slaughter Highs, that was one of the movies that got me to start actually looking at Scream, at an Arrow video. I really did want this movie really bad. Cal 
I think Cameron Rose in this one as well. Uh, this is a very early 80s one, actually. I, I kind of dug it. I really dug this one. But the ending is, just makes you want to watch it over again. And yes, I have the actual edition that's uncut. So, yeah. Um, I know a lot of people went and grabbed the Blu-ray and just said, okay, we'll sell off my other one. But no, this is uncut. The Blu-ray is not. Uh, I do love Tourist Trap. I think it's a really cool movie. And uh, Chuck, Chuck Connors does a great job on it. Hell High is a horrible movie. It's actually a little bit cut down too, actually. It's, uh, I think it's put up by Street Show. They did a few couple of those cut down ones. But uh, n not much is cut out of it. And it's actually a very, fairly fun film. Or the uh, Joe Bob Brinks commentary. Film South of Man. Uh, this is one. Of, this is, I think, my only Scorpion releasing uh, Blu-ray. The Unseen. I would really love that more Scorpion releasing Blu-rays, but I don't like the fact that they're going through screen archives, uh, which is make them more expensive. Unseen, love it. It's a fun little film. Evil Dead. It's a classic. I, what can I say with Evil Dead that's not been said already? It's it's an amazing film. So it's just. A two of the one that I got on at Dollarama. So guys, if you don't have this. I uh, one here, you're severely missing out. One of them is from, I think they're probably both from, no, one's from, from 79, uh, one's from the 80s. So there's one in the 70s one that I missed, which was one of Stranger Calls. But the 80s one is Happy Birthday to Me. It's just a, a great, great little film. Uh, Camden ruled the slasher genre, as he really did in the 80s. Uh, Hellraiser, an amazing film by Clyde Barker. This was his directorial debut. It's a horror classic. And it was the first thing that good dude ever directed. It's amazing. Uh, Monster Squad's really fun. If you haven't seen this one, guys, you really should. Think of the Goonies, but with like monsters in it. Uh, Dracula and uh, Werewolf and uh, Wolfman and basically uh, uh, Frankenstein Monster album come come back. Frankenstein Monster is more good. The Dracula, of course, is the evil guy along with the, uh, the creature from the Black Lagoon. All, all of them are there, so it's really cool. You know, the Creeps was made by the same director, by the way. It's uh, also a very kind of cool one. So, guys, thrill me. This is just such a fun film. The last one. This is the last, very last one? Yeah. <clears throat> we made good Ma time. We did make good time, actually. I did. You know, it took me 71 minutes to do an even longer one with the, the, nine, the 2000s. Oh, it's uh, My Bloody Valentine. This is a special edition. I missed out on the Blu-ray. This one, I'm really disappointed because this is one of my favorite slasher movies of all time. Um... I bought this one at a Blockbuster, uh, before, when there was a Blockbuster around here, and it's a great edition. There are some great features on it. My Bloody Valentine is a great film. It's uh, in a classic one. It was shot in Nova Scotia, which is actually very close to where we live. Just uh, a ferry ride over there. And uh, it's a great one. There's a lot of Moosehead beer references in this movie. Just like, if you get do like a drinking game with uh, Moosehead beer references, uh, yeah, it's amazing. The 80s was an amazing time for horror it uh and there's so much more that i don't have here there's so much more that i haven't taken out uh movies like uh like Nightmare on elm street uh would define like uh generations to come uh films like uh the uh like friday 13th part four and part six would actually revitalize uh horror franchises that people thought were going to be long dead uh, the, the remake of The Fly and the remake of The Thing done in the 80s proved that remakes could really, really, really work and be very, very well done. Uh, the 80s was a golden time of horror. Uh, in the 70s, there are some amazing stuff. And I went through the 70s, there were some I'm great things. My 80s geek shit. Are you really? That's yeah. awesome. Uh, <clears throat> you were meant to do this video. Uh, I was voluntold to do this. You were. You were voluntold. Now we gotta put them all back. Yes, I do. Yay. Uh, Stepfather, just there are so many great films out there. Uh, in more than any other decade, more than any other generation, uh, we're gonna be going through the 60s, we're gonna be going through the classics, but uh, there's it, there were in the 30s and 40s, we're gonna look at movies and monster movies and stuff. In the 50s, or they, you know, they got into the really monster stuff, in the 40s, and the universal characters. Uh, in the 70s, like, tried to get, it was paranoid, it was gritty. Uh, the 90s were kind of, were trying to shun away from it, so you had to go to more to direct, to DVD type stuff to watch it. And then the 2000s, millennials, uh, horror was kind of clots way back, usually through uh, foreign films and, um, and indie directors and stuff that were kind of bring it up. And then you saw, like, uh, big major studios trying to make big cash grabs with movies like Saw and stuff like that. 
But 80s, I think, is the only time that I can think of when the, when horror was completely and utterly embraced as a, as a, as a genre and became huge. I mean, like right now, the movies that you're seeing with Screen Factory, movies with Errol, are all films that were... Uh, that, that a lot of them came out in the in the 80s. And why? Because they were just such fantastic films. It was a, gl a glory, a glor glor blah, it was a glorious time to uh, to to get these films. It was a glorious, glorious decade. Uh, the slasher films. You know, a lot of people look down on the slasher films, but they helped like like just bring in other other styles of film. They helped bring like and one thing that slasher films did and they did really well back in the 80s. Was a lot of actors, like older actors, weren't working at the time. And this is before Murder, She Wrote was all on the air to give them all uh, paychecks. So, uh, they, you know, every slasher movie, almost everyone you look, can think of it, has is anchored by a classic actor. Uh, we have, like, uh, Terror Train. And we've got uh, the uh, Halloween films. Just so many of the great ones. Just look back at them. You see many great actors are in those. Glenn Ford is in Happy Birthday to Me. Uh, again, another fantastic actor. That wasn't getting a lot of work at the time. Uh, John Saxon's career was revitalized by uh, by making the movie uh, a Nightmare on Elm Street. He'd done Black Christmas before in the, in the 70s when there'd been uh, like a long spree in between where he was just doing stuff. But uh, yes, I mean, there's amazing stuff there. Dario Gentle made some of his best films, uh, you know, during that period, in my opinion. And uh, there was just so much great stuff. So my the original Pup Master film was done in 1989. Uh, with uh, by Full Moon and uh, you know the with Paul Lamatt, like just another again another like fantastically cool film. So many good films uh, were done then. When you think about the best vampire films, films I love the Christopher Lee vampire films, but for me the greatest vampire film for me of all time is is Fright Night. Uh, that's in that's an eighties film. You want to talk about like killer doll movies, kind of like doing stuff different. Um, Tom Holland was was a writer that like we just like flourished in the eighties. You know, stuff like Fright Night, stuff like with uh, Child's Play, just such amazing, amazing stuff that was that was being done. Um, and the monster movies were still being done. We had stuff like, we had, you know, we had stuff like the, the Monster Squad. We had like a, a bunch of like, we had the where films became like huge again and became a big thing. It became so, so, so good that they actually had a, a very cool TV series called Werewolf that lasted a season that with Chuck Connors in it and John J. York. Uh, who would later go on to be uh, Mac in uh, General Hospital? Uh, again, another uh, fantastic uh, part of the uh, of the whole '80s mythos is that we really embraced it. Uh, just so much great stuff came out of it. You're a big '80s fan. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, it is so. I knew going in that this would be the decade that would define me horror-wise. I knew I I already that was a that was a given if you watched many of my videos. But what I wanted to find out is what my thoughts on on the other decades and i was really able to find out exactly some of the stuff i liked some of the stuff i was surprised about some of the 90s stuff that actually really impressed me some of the more millennial stuff that i found that i found incredible and there's just you know i do love i don't think there's a decade that i that i don't like in a horror that i can't find something good in and uh my good friend dean dvd did a video once like what's wrong with uh, horror, with modern horror and I did one that what's right with modern horror. But uh, what's right with horror, uh, aside from, you know, from the classics and stuff, is the 80s. It's a revitalization of the classics. We had the uh, VHS came around at that time. And it was just a, a huge outlet for it to bring a lot more films. Horror and action is what, uh, what sold. So we got a lot of horror and action. There was a lot of crap. But in between a lot of that, there was a lot of really amazing stuff. And stuff that we thought at the time was pretty crappy that just turned out to be even more incredible than you can even imagine. The 80s, for me, is the ultimate decade of horror. Yes, there, we had The Exorcist and Texas Chainsaw done in the 70s. The first Halloween film was done in the, in the 70s. And that's fantastic. My favorite horror movie of all time, Black Christmas, was done in the 70s. But uh, all those films, as fantastic as they are, I think every one of them had... Uh, now, with not improvements, they're just... I enjoyed the 80s. I enjoy looking back at the 80s films more than any other uh, decade of horror. And there's more, many of these that I've watched over and over and over again. I will continue to watch over and over again because they're just amazing films. So uh, that's my thought. What do you think about the 80s and horror? I think it's the best decade of horror. Her favorite horror film. 
Her favorite film comes out of the 80s, Dolls, and it is an amazing film. Uh, Full Moon did some, uh, as Empire Pictures, did some great stuff before the 90s came around and it became Full Moon Pictures, and uh, yeah, we all know what happened there. It started good, and ended bad. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. For me right now, it's uh, say hello to the great deities, the Lord, the Phantom, the, the creature. And uh, for me right now, it's time for tea, for Cass. That time, as soon as I put back these movies. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, what, 1 or 2 in the morning now? 2.38. We got in less than an hour, so pretty good. For me right now, it's time to put these movies back, have a late night tea, and I get some sleep. It looks like we're sleeping in tomorrow. But for us, right now, there's only one thing that we're going to do. We're going to... Exactly. So, uh, happy Friday, and we are out of here.